That right there is ice. What's up, my homies? As you can tell, winter fishing is here. I'm all bundled up. I got like the furry hoodie on. I got my virgin beanie on, my tire warehouse beanie. Winter fishing though, it means two things for me. One, giant bass. Dude, everything big bites during the winter, whether it's smallmouth, spotted bass, largemouth, no matter what body of water you're on, even in Florida, even in Alabama, the big ones tend to bite in this kind of situation. Yeah, I know you're not limited. But that also means, since I'm a tackle freaking hoarder, I went and bought a bunch of stuff from Tackle Warehouse. So we're gonna go through winter bass baits for catching some big fish. A lot of them are gonna be hard baits, swim baits, kind of cool stuff to go through. So all some kind of unique stuff that I think you'll dig. But we're gonna go through because I dumped a bunch of money at Tackle Warehouse as usual. I'm gonna tell you about what I got, why I got it, how I'm gonna throw it. Stay tuned. So I got my bin right here, and I'm gonna get out probably the most popular bait in winter fishing. But it's popular not because everybody throws it, which which does happen, but dude, day in and day out, it catches freaking giants, and they, they eat it, dude, whether the water's dirty, whether the water's clean, whether they're active or they're not, and that's like a trap style bait. I got a bunch of different ones here, and I'm gonna show you and tell you why I got these guys, because some of them I think are kinda, I don't know, kind of unique, and it, and it comes back to one of those principles that we talk about where vibration and like kind of like keying into that fish's lateral line really makes a difference, as well as like size of lures. I got something I'm gonna show you that's um, that's a little bit kind of under the radar. Everybody throws this bait, but they don't always throw this bait. And actually, let's start with that one. This guy right here. So everybody throws a red eye shad. It's one of the best rattle baits on the market, like a rip bait, freaking, it catches fish. But what I have right here, this is a quarter ounce size of the red eye shad, a little bit smaller. It's a little harder to throw because you have to throw it on some lighter tackle. But what's so great about this guy is you can throw it in like a foot and a half of water. You can throw it in very skinny water. It's also a very small bait presentation. When you have those finicky fish because of the cold weather, or if you have them keying, you know, spotted bass on Smith Lake, they, they keen on a very uh, on a lot of like small forage. So if you have really small forage or just super pressured bass, going small is the way to go. So it's a quarter ounce red eye shad, kind of under the radar. One of my favorite colors, green gizzard shad. Super popular color, but it just catches them. It mimics the shad around here, whether it's threadfin, gizzard, whatever, very well. Super duper cool bait. Got another red eye shad here. This is, uh, we throw down on October, we throw a lot of spooks, uh, topwater baits, and we throw them in bone usually. It's one of the best colors out there. So I grabbed kind of a bone style red eye shad. I think they call it bone too. Bad to the bone. So it's a variation of that. This is the half ounce, you know, standard rip style, fish the grass, fish winter kind of thing. We, we throw them in Florida on braid usually because we're ripping onto the grass. Up here, I'm transitioning to throw them on like 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon. Same kind of rod usually, like a seven foot to seven foot three. I like a little longer rod, medium heavy. You just want it to have a little bit more of a moderate fast tip, um, just so it's it's crankbait fishing. So when the fish eats it, you know, the rod doesn't like over, I don't know what you say, overload up. You want that tip to kind of give so they can kind of suck it down. Because a lot of times what's gonna happen is you'll be fishing this through and you might pop it and that's when those fish are gonna eat it. So you want that rod to be a little bit more absorbing of that strike so those fish get that bait completely. And then going back to the lateral lines, this is a bait I actually used to throw a lot back in the day. It's a Spro Aruka Shad. Um, there's a few different sizes. This is the 75, and then I also got the 65 and the 65. And you'll see kind of my colorations. Red, or what is this specifically called? This is Texas Craw. That's gonna be for when, we're gonna get some rains this winter. It's gonna dirty up the water, put like quite a strong stain in the water. Red is one of those colors that shows up. You guys probably all know in Texas, they're always throwing red in the winter. Like Texas red, it's all about that. Well, that's something that works here too. And I've seen it with my own eyes, hanging out with Caleb from Bass Quest. Go check him out on YouTube. But red and, and some chartreuse colors are 
some excellent colors for when that water gets dirty because we have that rain and that runoff coming in. But at the same time, if it's dry like it was kind of all summer, you want something a little more subtle. And this is, what is it? Clear chartreuse. Basically, it's it's a clear style of the same exact bait. What I found with these ricochets though is that they're a little skinnier kind of body profile on the top, so they don't like vibrate. When you're actually reeling them in, they're not nearly as like as that red eye shad is. They're a little like softer vibration, a little tighter, maybe even a little higher pitched, and they do have smaller BBs in them too. You can kind of hear them right there but it's a different presentation you know they see a lot of these these rattle style baits around here and they work day in and day out whether it's a red eye shad whether it's classic rattle trap but i try to have a little mix especially when you get on a little pot of fish or you get on a little pattern say the fish are on points eating a rattle trap bait you know mixing it up showing them something a little bit different you might trigger that bigger fish to bite full 100 percent disclosure you guys know I love my gambler stuff and I love my gambler easy swim baits. And those are re like really the first things that I'll have on when it comes to swim bait fishing, whether I'm throwing a rig or whether I'm throwing like a solo naked swim bait. But there, there's a new fad in what I would call like micro swim baits. And it's especially something that's been super popular for smallmouth fishing as well as spotted bass fishing. And you know, I like following and like trying things out and learning as well. For as much as I love gigantic baits, I love smaller stuff too. So I did grab some, some Kai Tech Swing Impact a lot of you guys have told me to get these. I got the 2.8 and then the slightly larger size. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to show you, but I'll use these on a rig or I'm going to put them on this new custom jig head that we designed. It's, it's the goat swim bait head. It's, it's pretty sick, but I'll show that to you in a minute. The other two, and I got to send some props to a couple guys that I know, Kobe Pellerito, um, epic smallmouth fisherman and just amazing artist with the camera. He put me onto this spark shed. He actually busted out. It's mega bass. I love mega bass stuff. It's high quality. It's a little more premium price point, but it's high quality stuff. But this spark shed, he busted it out when we were fishing Gunnersville last year, and we had some very finicky fish that were getting beat on by a lot of guys, and he went through and he actually got some bites of like twos and three pounders thrown this spark shed. It's a very small, you can see it's a small boot tail, boot tail swim bait, but super subtle, very, very little water displacement. So it's a different kind of presentation. And especially as we get into that later kind of winter, when you have some smaller bait running around, maybe moving into spring even, this thing can really show off. Plus for the spotted bass, dude, they absolutely chew this thing. And then another shout out to somebody that I know, and it's Scottsboro Tackle Company. It, it's actually a tackle shop in Scottsboro, right down on freaking Lake Gunnersville. Super great people. Go visit them. Say hi to Andrea when you're there. But Andrea's husband makes some awesome swim baits. Check that thing out, dude. Like, they're just micro boot tail style swim baits. Super supple plastic. Like, awesome color patterns. This is, let me actually check what this one is. I'm not even sure what color. Dirty Hitch. This is Dirty Hitch. But very subtle, like I will throw this on, a, on an eighth or a quarter ounce head solo for like spotted bass, just slow reel it over 50, 45 feet of water and those fish will come up and they will crush it. But just, I mean, dude, it's such a cool looking bait. And what's really cool with these small swim baits is they do have that small tail, but it wags very, very tight. There, there's not as much kind of side to side kind of tracking motion. It's a very tight wobble. And in these lower temperatures in these winter conditions, that tight wobble, just like, you know, like a jerk bait or something like that, that that's a very tight kind of like darting kind of action. That's what you're looking for. But these things are super sweet. They're actually called the Hand Poured Scottsboro Swim Bait, I believe. It's pretty straightforward. You find them on Tackle Warehouse, and I'll put links to all this stuff down in the Tackle Warehouse. Since we're talking about swim baits, let's talk about swim baits heads. This is what I was teasing. Um, this is the new Gambler Lock Up um, Swim Bait Head or Shad Head. You can see right here, super detailed. I'm actually a fan of the, the natural ones. These are basically like a lead standard color, but then there's a clear coat that you actually put on them. So they still have that nice reflective finish, 3D eyes. The biggest key with these jokers though, is that that twist lock or that screw lock on there locks the bait on. And what's really cool, this is actually a three yacht, but we're making an eighth ounce and a quarter ounce, I believe, with a two watt hook. It's a very small hook, but it's got that standard wire hook on it. So you can put some of those micro swim baits. I know on some of these Alabama rigs, we like throwing like kind of tiny swim baits like that, whether it's for spotted bass or largemouth that are highly pressured. That smaller two watt hook is gonna be a perfect fit for if you're throwing the TZ, if you're throwing that 2.8 Kai Tech. 
it is freaking sweet. The other thing is too, we got two different versions. One of them is actually a painted head and I got a little bigger one here, but they're all available. Eighth ounce all the way up to three quarter ounce. I think this is a half with a, a four out or a five out, but you can see 3D eye design. It's that same goat swim jig kind of style head. It's modified just a little bit for the swim bait application, but that screw lock keeper, dude, it'll keep your baits from slipping down, especially when you're fishing them hard, maybe ripping them off of grass or throwing it on the A-rig where there's a lot more pressure and a lot more kind of I don't know, just, just beat up being put down on the bait from casting such a heavy rig and things along those lines. Super duper sweet. As I'm digging in the box, big other. So as long as we tease some spotted bass fishing, let me show you these guys real quick. So first off, you guys ask me a lot of times what line I'm using when I'm using like spinning tackle on these spotted bass or smallmouth. I like, it's super expensive, but I like Fireline, Berkeley Fireline. And this is actually what I use, 14 pound braid. Um, it's super low diameter. I think it's like six pound. Yeah, it's six pound equal test diameter if you're using like monofilament, for instance. But what I really like about this, and I think there's a couple line companies that make maybe like fluorescent, but it's really hard to find white line. And what the white line does is it allows you to see your line in the water. So say if you're drop shotting or something on those lines, throwing a shaky head or something, I can actually see this line jump in the water. I'm always running a leader on it, six, eight, 10 pound test. So I'm not really worried about the fish seeing it because I got my fluorocarbon leader, Sunline Sniper usually, but this allows me to see any kind of line jump and as well as kind of just see my line going down. When you're fishing for these spots in like 50, 60 foot of water, if they're down all the way on the bottom, seeing that your line is still like sinking or going down is highly important and it's really hard to do when you're working with green braided line. So try it out, it is expensive, but it does last quite quite a long time. I'll usually run this stuff on the same spool for like six months, five months, and then I gotta change it out because it gets spun up. The other things though, and this is kind of funny, is War Eagle Spoon, but there's none in there. You know why? Because it's actually tied up on one of my rods. These are half ounce War Eagle Spoons, and there's none in there because I already lost one and tied it up on the spoon. What you do is you use these for spotted bass. You can also use them for largemouth if you find some suspended largemouth off some, you know, some winter ledges or something like that. But I got a few different versions. I found that War Eagle's the best straight out of the package. Why is that? Because it already comes with a swivel on the top, comes with a decent hook. But I got a few others, Hopkins spoon, very classic. Only downside to this is you gotta change out the hook and you have to put a split ring and a swivel on the top, but it is a little different body profile. It's a little longer and skinnier. So if you're trying to show the fish something a little different, perfect application, perfect option. Then I got another one. I've, I've fished big spoons like this, but I've never fished a little micro spoon like this. And this is a crocodile spoon, another old school lure. Um, it does have the swivel on top, so she is ready to go. I'd probably change out that hook. Doesn't look too bad, it's got a VMC, but it's, it's just a little different presentation with the spoon. And also, you can see it has that concave kind of body. This is gonna dart and flutter a little bit differently than those standard you know, vertical jigging spoons. Those vertical jigging spoons, they go pretty much straight up and down. They have a little bit of fluttering action, but this has a little wider gait to it. So it's going to go up, but it's gonna go whoop, 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 a lot more than those other spoons. So just a slightly different presentation. Those spoon fish are, or the spoons are perfect for those fish that are suspended. Those spotted bass tend to suspend a lot this time of year. You know, you'll be fishing over 80, 100, maybe even 60 feet of water. And, and you'll actually mark those fish on the graph and you need some kind of presentation to not drop all the way to the bottom, but to drop on a controlled drop to where they're at and vertical fishing with a spoon is really, it's not super fast, but it's the most efficient way to put that bait right in front of them. So we touched on some mega bass stuff. Well, we're gonna go back to the large mouth cause I got a fun one, dude. And once again, it's a bait, I don't even know how to pronounce. I think it's Uze, Uze, Uze. You guys can correct me and give me hell on it. But this isn't your standard swim jig. You know, when I'm throwing a swim jig, I like my goat or my heavy cover swim jig from Gambler. But this joker, is an underspin, dude. It's got your classic, you know, brush guard like a swim jig would have, but I actually got one out of the package because I was playing around with it a little bit. And you can see it has that underspin blade right there that dangles down. And as you guys know, winter is a time for fishing hard baits. Well, I consider a swim jig a hard bait, even though you do put a plastic trailer on it, but especially when you add a blade to it or something else that gives kind of flash or vibration like that, it really adds to that hard bait appeal. It seems like to me, once you get in those water temperatures that are like, 58, 59, let's just say to be rounded, like 60 degrees and lower, those fish really key in on hard bait presentations. 
you know, jerk baits, like your Vision 110, um, you know, flat-sided crank baits. The only exceptions to that really are kind of like swim bait rigs, whether it's an Alabama rig or something along these lines, like an underspin, where you can put like a small swim bait as a trailer on this joker, but it's still overall a hard bait. So we talked about a lot how swim baits kind of play into this time of year. There's going to be a lot of shad swimming around, especially when the water warms up. They kind of get to the top or they'll suspend over the grass lines. They pot up. Well, you're always looking for different ways to present a swim bait. I like throwing them on my goat swim jig head or my swim bait head. But when you're looking for a slightly different kind of action and maybe you're looking to displace a little more water, coming back to my guys from Scottsboro, these are basically scrounger heads. You can see it's got that bill on it. They also do have a screw lock on it. So you basically take a soft plastic, whether it's a swim bait. Um, I actually like putting, there's an eel bait that I put on the back of this, um, but you can put that on there and you can actually swim this and you almost treat it like a crankbait where you're, you're actually cranking it. It'll like, it'll basically wobble like that over grass, you know, whatever submerging grass is still left. If you got rock bars, um, sometimes at the dam, you know, you're fishing over some of those rock bars and you're looking to just tick the rock bars, but you need a little more vibration because we've gotten some rain and it's colored up the water. It's just a different presentation. It's all about thinking about something that, that works, swim bait fishing and reimagining it slightly differently. And that's what this scrounger style head allows you to do. All right, I got two more for you and then we're gonna wrap this thing up. The first one, and, and you guys know about it, but it's actually a different size that's being made. It's the Mickey Stinger, but these are these are three inches. And um, I've been using these a lot on a drop shot. You see it's in a shad style color. Once again, coming back to like focusing on shad and bait, uh, but super small. It's something that I'm really excited to use, maybe on a Ned rig, but more so on a, on a drop shot, on a wacky rig. We talked about targeting those suspended spotted bass, and that's something that, that I definitely can can use to target them. For, for some reason, the spotted bass tend to bite plastics all winter long. Like even if it gets super duper cold, hard bait to do work and they're actually super viable, but those spots, especially when you have them like grouped up on say like a tree or some kind of structure, they'll still eat those soft plastics. So this is kind of a cool presentation. I love that little sickle kind of tail because the way it shakes or even throwing it just on a straight wacky rig, skipping it under docks like a dying shed. Cool bait. The other one is something completely different, but it's something that I found. Thanks to you guys. Let me grab it. More boss jig heads. But I didn't know they made this one. This is a ball head jig. And you guys know, I actually got some in here, how much I love this War Eagle finesse jig. It's got that stout hook, but a good brush guard. Basically a finesse jig, but all the qualities of a standard jig. So I can still throw it on a medium heavy rod, 15 pound fluorocarbon. Well, I got these guys because they are super cheap. I want to say they're like $6.99 for like six of them that come in, or four of them, $5.99. Don't hold me to it. There's a link to them down in the description box if you want to learn more. Um, you'll find them at Tackle warehouse but they're high quality jig heads and as you guys know i've been stacking up my my skirts unlimited like custom skirt making material and I, i've actually even been when i've been sitting around and we've been watching tv i've been making some custom skirts so i've been making these skirts and instead of spending like whatever it costs to get those war eagles i can actually make a custom skirt that's very comparable like to any of these kind of skirts. I got all that magic crawl kind of stuff. I got brown, I got green pumpkin, I got all the different colors. And I can make custom skirts, strap them on these jigs and go to town. Or I can even use them naked if I just wanna put like a little crawl bait on them or something like that. And stay tuned, we're actually gonna go through a video. I had a buddy of mine give me the most ultimate skirt making like tool. It's the coolest thing. I don't think you can get them anymore, but we're gonna walk through a, like how that thing works how to make a skirt with it. And we're gonna make some skirts and show you how to rig up some of these custom finesse jigs. So we'll save that for another video, but definitely something when it comes to spotted bass, I caught a lot of smallmouth um, near the near the dam when the current's running on these finesse jigs. The ball jigs were great on that rocky style cover, not as great in the wood, but that rocky kind of boulder gravel kind of stuff. They don't get hung nearly as much and it's just a presentation they don't see that much. Plus I can get super finesse with it, with it which I love doing. So if you guys enjoyed that little winter fishing lure bait walkthrough. Um, those are some lures that I'm going to be throwing. Some stuff that I picked up from Tackle Warehouse. Like I said, I'll put links to all that stuff down at Tackle Warehouse in the description box below. But do me a couple favors. One, let me know 
any kind of winter baits that you're using, whether it's finesse stuff, whether it's big hard baits, things along those lines that you implement when these temperatures start getting cold, we start seeing ice on the ground. Because some of the best fishing occurs this time of year. It's really a challenge to get out there and to deal with the weather conditions. But if you do, you can be highly rewarded. I think last year there were two 13 pounders caught sometime during this year. I know Lake Chickamauga goes off with some giants. I know even in Florida, dude, the cold weather periods were some of the best like magnum bass fishing times of the year. So I'm super excited to get out there and try out some of these baits. And of course, I'm going to be buying more stuff. But definitely drop some tips, drop some baits that you're using during this winter fishing period. And I hope these winter fishing tips helped you out. And as usual, guys, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And we'll see you back here. We'll either be fishing or talking fishing. Peace.